The integer overflow is a classic coding behavior in computer science and coding in general. In this video, we're going to be learning about what it is, the catastrophic problems it has caused, and how those problems could have been avoided. Let's get started. To fully understand the integer overflow problem, we need to have a rough understanding on how a computer stores and processes information. The computer stores and processes information in bits and bytes. The bit is the smallest unit of information and can hold one of two values, either a zero or a one. The byte is simply a collection of eight bits. In some programming languages, when we want to store data, we have to tell the computer the size of the data we want to store. We do this indirectly by using data types, for example, we can use an integer to store a number by writing int a equals to 3. What we've done here is told the computer to reserve space in its memory for an integer which has the size of 4 bytes or 32 bits to store the value of a. Somewhere in the computer's memory, there is a chain of 32 bits to store the value of a. We initialize that value to 3 so that block only stores 3 or 1 1 in binary. An interesting fact about representing decimal numbers in binary is, as the decimal number increases, the number of bits needed to represent the number in binary also increases. For example, to represent 0, 1, 2, and 3 in binary, we only need 2 bits because 0, 0 is 0, 0, 1 is 1, 1, 0 is 2, and 1, 1 is 3. If we wanted to represent 4 in binary, we would have to add an extra bit and with that, we can keep counting up to about 7. Now, if we wanted to go above 7, you guessed it right we would have to add an extra bit as well. So the number of bits determine the maximum and the minimum number you can count to. With two bits, you can only count to about three. With three bits, you can count to about seven. And with 32 bits, which is the size of the integer, you can count to about 4.2 billion. However, computers use two's complement, which uses the first bit to indicate the sign of the number. So you can only count to a max of about 2.1 billion and a minimum of about negative 2.1 billion. Back to our example where we have int a is equal to 3. The maximum value a can be is this number right here, which equates to this in 32 bits to complement binary. Remember, the first bit is used to show if the number is a positive or a negative number. 0 means it's a positive number and 1 means it's a negative number. Let's take a look at this example right here. We've assigned a to the maximum number that an integer can be. We then perform an operation to increase a by 1 and we're printing out the result. When we print out the result, we are expecting this value to go up by 1, but in actuality, it goes back to the minimum value that an integer can be, which is negative 2.1, roughly 2.1 billion. Well, the reason this happens is because it has overflown. So the integer itself can only store this much number, and we're trying to add one to it. So it basically just wraps back around to the smallest number that it can be. Obviously, this isn't the result we're expecting. We're expecting a to be this number right here. But as I said earlier, it has basically overflown. It has basically overwrapped back to the smallest number that an integer can be. It may seem like a little problem, but integer overflow can and has caused some catastrophic failures in the past. Imagine writing code to do some calculations for something related to space travel or banking systems where you need to be as accurate as possible. And this happens. This was the exact case with Ariane 5 rockets. A few seconds into launch on June 4th, 1996, the $7 billion project exploded. The cause of this crash was because the software system was attempting to store values that had the size of 64 bits into 16-bit slots. It just couldn't work. Overflow can happen with any data type, not just integers. As long as you're trying to fit more than what the data type can handle, an overflow will occur. Some languages do warn you while others don't, they just keep on compiling. There are several ways you can avoid this problem, but the most obvious one is to know the size of the data you want to store and assign the appropriate data type to it. There are data types like the long that are way bigger than an integer and will handle values that are too big for the integer. It is also important to stress test your code to find weird behaviors, especially if the program is going to be customer facing. The final solution is to use a language that avoids this problem, but that's easier said than done because you're better off knowing the ins and outs of your code and testing it thoroughly. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace. 